Good afternoon. In this concept drawing, you're going to be creating a futuristic city in the clouds called Cloud City. Now, here's an example of a finished Cloud City, and you can see there are four buildings, clouds, and lots of supporting details like windows and doors. So you have to have the supporting details, you have to have at least four buildings, and you have to have clouds. Not only do the buildings have to be shaded, but the clouds do too. But before we get to the final, let's do our concept. So here I have a sheet of concept paper, a little bit smaller than our 60 pound paper for drawing. And I'm gonna draw lightly on the surface near the bottom here, some circles. Now I draw lightly so I don't have to erase, but I am gonna go back right now and pick what portions of those circles I wish to reinforce and which portions I want to not reinforce, I want to leave alone. So these lighter lines down here, the ones that I chose not to reinforce, not to darken, I can pretty much ignore those. I don't really have to erase those. They're so light, I can pretty much pretend they're not even there. So here I have my clouds, and I'm gonna start with one of my buildings. Now I'm gonna start with a group of lines, one, two, three, that you'll recognize. This arrow configuration, these three lines coming together, can form a building, a rectangular prism. And as you would see the building from street level looking up, the top of each of your tall buildings will look a bit like an arrow pointing up into the sky. Remember, that's a form that we've practiced before. Now here comes another arrow and another rectangular prism. Remember that if one portion of the building goes behind another, the portion behind can't be seen, so we overlap. And it's common in cities to have one building be appear behind another. That's kind of what makes it a crowded big city. So you can overlap too. Over here, I'm gonna go ahead, making two straight lines that cross, and that forms an X. And then here at the top, I'll very carefully create a, an arch or a curved line that will help define the curve of this cone. This is gonna be a cone right here. These are rectangular prisms, this is a cone, and this right here is going to become a pyramid. Now, this is one building right here, a second and a third. I still need a fourth building, and I might just go ahead and have it hanging from a cable coming down from the sky. I can pretend like there's a group of clouds here from which this cable is hanging. Now, this building is very irregular in its shape. It looks a little bit like a pickle or something from nature. This type of form, and I'm gonna to start to add some details here, would be called an organic form. Anything that looks like it may have come from nature, we can refer to as organic. Now, it can be a building. What kind of building, I can't tell you, but nonetheless, it's a form. It's not a flat shape. Let me continue to add some details to these other buildings right now. If I go to this building and go to its left side and add an oval, and then because the oval's on the left side, go to the left side of that oval and repeat that curve, I can show you the frame of that window, or I guess it would be more like the thickness of the wall through which the window has been cut. And even though I don't normally do much shading, a little bit of shading here and here, along that curve gives me the sense that that's a curving surface and light falls against it differently depending on where the curve is and whether or not the curve is facing towards a source of light or not. If I did the same type of window over here on this right side, well, then it would be the right side of the oval that I would reproduce or copy. And here I would have the same light shading that gives me a sense of that being a curved surface, okay? Maybe on top of this, I will put a cone. This one is right side up. Now watch this. These ovals, well, they're really partial ovals, aren't they? They don't go all the way around, at least so that we can see. They wrap around that cone that sits atop this building, this rectangular prism over here. And over here, let's put a different set of windows in. I'm gonna take that line right there on the left side, and I'm simply gonna repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Wherever I wish to repeat that line, on the left side, I just duplicate or copy the angle that I have here at the top all the way down, and that gives me a sense of a set of modern windows on a modern office building, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the right side. Notice how I turn my paper to make it easier for my hand 
to come in and go exactly where it needs to be. Coming off that middle point, I can create the next set of windows identical to the first except traveling down the length of the right side. Okay, so there I have kind of the appearance of a modern office building. Notice how that arrow there is repeated again and again down the length of this one building. Jumping back here, I think what I'll do is make a portion of an oval right there. And because I'm on the right side, go ahead and duplicate that right outer edge of the oval. And that could be an arch doorway through I go. Now here on this side, the left side, notice how again, I'm gonna grab that angle, bring it down. There it is, I grabbed it. I brought the same angle down over here on the left side, come down into the cloud. This is a more traditional opening. Go to the left side, we're on the left side of the building, go to the left side, recreate that inside edge of that door frame as you might imagine it seeing it from down below a little bit off to one side, okay? So there I've got plenty of details going on there. I've got some interesting details on, going on here. Let's see what I can do with the pyramid. Well, you know, I'm gonna do with a pyramid kind of what I did with one of, this, one of these rectangular prisms. I'm just gonna repeat arrows going down its length and those flat lines describing the flat surface of the pyramid helps me to understand that that's a four-sided pyramid and I can see two of the four sides. Now remember I said this is gonna be a cone, so that's a curved surface, so you can curve lines. Notice how I just grab this curve at the top and repeat the curve and repeat the curve and repeat the curve. And by repeating the curve, then I get a sense that that's a curved surface and not a flat surface. So this would be my four buildings, clouds, futuristic city in the clouds, cloud city, and this would be my concept drawing. You can continue to add things to this. I'm gonna go ahead and add a zip line. Notice I haven't erased yet. I just drew lightly and then darkened the portions of the line I wanted to see. For proportion, I'm going to give myself a little figure, a little human figure right here, very small. And this person is on a zip line, zipping down the zip line. This could be you or me. And because this individual, like you or me, is very small in relationship to everything else in the picture, we get a sense of proportion or scale, and that would be how everything is much bigger than we are because we are so very small like that. I could come down here. There's another oval. It's not gonna be a window. It's gonna be the top lip of a coffee cup, a giant coffee cup, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a handle right there. There might be a little shadow falling underneath that portion of the handle right there. And I might duplicate this curve right here. And that's not the edge, inside edge of a window. That is the level of the coffee, this giant coffee cup. This is where I go every morning to get my coffee from this giant coffee cup. I might even put a colorful red stripe right there wrapping around. Notice how I decide to choose certain lines to copy and in one surface and other lines to copy in another. You just have to kind of get used to what to draw, when to draw, in order to make your uh, objects look more three-dimensional. Now, you try.